puppeteer. Puppet, I don't have enough cannon fodder for Iraq. You need to help me out by sending more troops to Afghanistan. Yes, Master. Puppet, you don't have enough cannon fodder. Send your recruiters into the schools to get vulnerable young people and deceive them into joining the military. Yes, sir. <laughs> there are too many war resistors finding out that Canada might be a safe refuge. I need you to send them back. Yes, master. <laughs> There's a small chance they might get a fair hearing from the Immigration Refugee Board. I need you to make more hard right ideological appointments to the IRB so they don't get a fair hearing. Sir, yes, sir. Oh, what about those security certificates? We have to be tough on terror. So I need you to keep your multi-million dollar facility at Kingston with one man in solitary confinement. And more than 20 staff keeping him there. Yes, sir. A terrorist. He a terrorist. Too many human rights going down in Canada crack down on those people. Yes, master. Okay, I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> After that, after that uh, introduction from the, well, Via Martin from the principal itself, I had to find a more disreputable character to come in. <laughs> it's a very educational experience. It's always educational to protest folks, even under the rain. Something I've learned this week is that you can get masks like this for every American president back to Nixon and Reagan. There are no masks for Canadian politicians. <laughs> Why, you might ask. So this is an analytical problem. There's a couple of possibilities. One of them is we don't need masks for Canadian politicians because they're self-parodying. <laughs> However, that would also apply to a lot of American politicians. So there's another possibility. The other possibility is this man doesn't need a face because it doesn't really matter who he is as long as he's dancing on the imperial puppeteer's string. He's just a faceless puppet. <laughs> However, I would like to think that there's a more crassly economic reason. It's a bad investment to design and sell one of these because it's going to be history. <laughs> London People for Peace and the London War Resisters Rec uh, uh, Support Group and now Snarl are happy to see you all here. The other thing I learned this week is that there's some fa fantastic young people in our high schools who are doing really smart and courageous things and we have to get out and support them. We have to find other people who may feel isolated and put them in touch with uh, snarly folks like um, Martin and his friends. I'm going to give you a few chances now because when we head out walking, I'm going to be back in character. It's a tough job. You know, that mask, there's a number of problems with it. You can't hear very well, which actually goes with being a U.S. president. But more serious, more serious is it's got seriously narrow vision because the eyes are too close together. <laughs> In character or not, I don't know. Anyway, it's a dirty job. Somebody has to do it. I put back on the mask and we head out. But when we head out, I won't be able to chant because that guy doesn't do chants. So you need to help out by learning some chants now. We've already heard about letting resistors stay. There's a simple one about that, which is resistors in, Harper out. 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 Resistors in. Okay, you're going to help me out with that one. But the other one is the relationship between Bush's proactive forward uh, warmongering in Iran. You know, the, the, all these famili eerily familiar things we hear about weapons of mass destruction. I mean a nuclear program in Tehran that are sounding like the same noises that were made before the invasion of Iraq. And of course, Canada is doing its part in two ways. By looking the other way and pretending, oh, we don't hear anything about Iran. We couldn't possibly take a position on that. But it's also helping out by keeping our troops in, Iraq, in Afghanistan so that Bush can maybe scrape together enough for yet another irresponsible, inhumane invasion. So we need to say, troops out of Afghanistan, no new war in Iran. Troops out of Afghanistan, no new war in Iran. Afghanistan. No new war in Iran. Don't work it out. It doesn't scan so well, but you work on it. And anyway, you're all smart enough. You can figure out your own chance. Somebody over here with one that says this war is a whack. Bring our troops back. This war is a whack. Bring our troops back. This war is a whack. Bring our troops back. Bring our troops back. Bring our troops back. So.
We've heard this week about these weird polls that say the Afghanis love us and want to keep us there. Um, you have to keep in mind that this is the only polling or D3 who did this poll uh, are the only polling organization that was able to find overwhelming support in Iraq for the U.S. invasion and occupation there. So their methods are not quite the same methods that a lot of us might use, I think, if we were looking for um, a real point of view. I think if we look to some other figures, well, the other figure that's kind of weird is only 2% of the, of the Afghanis they polled knew Canada was involved, but 64% of them approved of Canada being there. So uh, I think there's statistical methods are uh, open to interpretation. But if we look at other sources, women, uh, Womankind Worldwide says that their, their, their polling in Afghanistan says that violence against women has been on the increase since the uh, Karzai government came into power and since the invasion, on the increase. So they lie to us when they say that we're there to help women's rights. The other figure from Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch is that most Afghanis view their own national police force and the Afghani National Army, the people we are supporting, with fear as a source of human rights abuses. So who the hell are we propping up there? Most Afghanis under any poll are calling for either a troops out now or a staged withdrawal of troops and for negotiations with the Taliban. Ooh, scary. Negotiations with the Taliban. Wait a second. Who wants to negotiate with the Taliban? Why, Hamid Karzai wants to negotiate with the Taliban. Not all that surprising because until he became a U.S. sponsored puppet, he was with the Taliban. So he's talking to people he knows very well. He's going to end up negotiating. The Afghani people want him to end up negotiating. Why the hell are we fighting? We are fighting not to defeat the Taliban. Esprit de Corps magazine, a, a military magazine, has already said that the military knows it is unwinnable in military terms. We are very simply fighting to improve the hand of the Karzai faction against other factions in Afghanistan. We are simply taking one side in a civil war between one group of drug lords and warlords and another group of drug lords and warlords. Why is Canada supporting internal factions in this fight? This isn't about human rights. This isn't about building schools. This is about supporting a U.S. puppet government and nothing else. What can we do? We can do lots. We can come out in the rain, which is one thing. Uh, we can call the MP our MPs about supporting war resistors and letting them stay, and we can speak up every chance we get about troops out. Finally, we can answer the bullshit rhetoric about supporting our troops being patriotic. As we know, we've seen some of the stickers and buttons here, the best way to support our troops is to bring them home. So when I go back into, char into character, nasty, but somebody has to do it, uh, I want you to remember to support our troops, bring them home. Support our troops, bring them home. Okay, Gina, thank you very much. Have a nice... No, I will be going.